ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Maybe. Sometimes. Tell me about this. I want to know more. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Holy cow. We've had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, we ended up buying two dresses for one event. So I've I've been promised that the second one will be worn for something else. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I make her wear it around the house if nothing else. Yeah. Put that on your body, girl. Mm-hmm. How about you, Nicole? You've got, uh, you're in the midst of the shopping, right? Yeah, we're going to go out this afternoon. And uh, having been through it last year, I'm dreading it. Does anybody get a Xanax I can pop? <laughs> <laughs> Have you found the Mormon prom dress uh, emporium <laughs> to go shop in? <laughs> emporium. <laughs> No, this is Southern California. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Everything is tight and short. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Man. Yes. All the all the girls this year are looking for, they call it a body con, I believe. Yeah, where it's real tight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, no, no. I, I don't know. What, yeah. I saw a fair number of, um, like, bare midriff, you know? Like, oh, my two, goodness. Two piece that showed a little belly. Yes. Oh my, that's just oh, not right. All things, all things are possible. Now, in my day, back shortly after the covered wagons, we wore like <laughs> full length dresses to homecoming. I had some very tasteful gunny sacks dresses that I would wear to homecomings. So they don't, they don't wear, nobody wears long dresses anymore. Do they even wear long dresses to prom or yeah. are long dresses just out? They save it for prom. They here. save it for prom? Yeah. Homecoming so. is, is as little fabric as you can get away with. Oh, yeah. Okay, rather like eighth grade dances are yeah. around here. This homecoming mm-hmm. is like the party kind of. Woo-hoo. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Things are so much less formal these yeah. days. Oh. Yes. And, and more expensive. Yes, I'm thinking I'm thinking that the, the dresses with, you know, 75% less fabric are like 75% more expensive than what I got. <laughs> it's not just that. And this, Catherine can probably attest to this, but it's the hair, the makeup, the nails. <sighs> that I mm-hmm. never did in my life, but especially not for homecoming. Yeah. Wow. And of course, if you get a limo like they do here. <gasps> for homecoming? Yeah, because homecoming is never held at the school or oh. anywhere in town. It's at least a half an hour away. Oh my goodness! Oh no, we didn't. We didn't have to do that. We yeah. there here. The homecoming dance was at the school. Oh, um, never. And did. everybody was, you know, people, kids drove themselves or their parents drove them or whatever. Um, and I laughed because when I went to pick her up afterwards, I would say about one in every twenty girls that came out was barefoot. Oh, no, yeah. it was not was not no. barefoot. Was not barefoot. Oh, Everybody not. else was holding their shoes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but you know, to my old and addled mind, I would say that if a dance is not fancy enough for a long formal gown, it's also not so fancy that you need to do your hair and nails. But it's oh. like they want all the trappings with mm-hmm. the short dress. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. in my look. day. No. <laughs> Where <did the> look? <laughs> Oh my, well, hello and welcome to Parenting Roundabout, a weekly podcast about the things that parents are talking about, obsessing about, and complaining about right now, especially girls' fashions. Uh, (laughs) I'm Terry Morrow, and um, I do not have to worry about any of that. With me today are Catherine Haleko. Still worrying about that. (laughs) And Nicole Eredix. Say hi, Nicole. Don't worry about that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Today on the podcast, we're going to talk about school district communications. We're going to share some favorite quotes from past podcasts on our Friday speed round, shout out some stuff we like on the Roundabout Roundup, and hear an interview with Gina Close about accommodating kids with food allergies at Halloween. Uh, But first, anything else new with you guys besides dress shopping? Mm. (laughs) That has been that has been occupying your every waking moment. (laughs) My my son is angling for a pumpkin patch trip still <laughs> I'm, and I'm so bad I'm like oh can we be done with this? can we not like go and do the hay ride and the and the caramel apple with all the bees and oh my <laughs> said, how much time did you spend on the girl in the dress take me to the pumpkin patch right I think that may be his his opinion 
<laughs> but you don't have to like get him a get him a manicure and a hairdo for the pumpkin patch, right? So it's that's a- that's quite true. He could probably use a manicure. Oh, they, do they are they are they doing fall activities out there in Southern California, Nicole? I can't remember from my youth whether we did any fall activities uh, other yeah. than sweat. As soon as the pumpkin spice latte shows up at yes. Starbucks, everybody uh-huh. gets out their flannel, uh-huh. regardless <laughs> of temperature, heads to the yeah. pumpkin patch, but they do their makeup and their hair because they want photos for Instagram <sighs> and Snapchat. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Getting so, dressed up to go to the pumpkin patch. Yeah. Oh, in California. That's Kids they- today. <laughs> With the clothes and the hair. Why don't we move on to our first topic, Catherine, as long okay. as we're talking about the way things are done today that we don't approve of. (laughs) Yes. So last week I got a letter from the school district and here is what, here's how it started. (laughs) First of all, it has a title in big capital letters, bold, centered at the top. Parent notification letter regarding at risk identification. Oh, jeez. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> well, and and let's just say, first of all, going back to when you open the mailbox and there's an envelope that's addressed to the parents of, mm-hmm. and it's from the school district. <laughs> it's never like, good. You cannot open that fast enough, <laughs> and then that's what it says at the top. So it goes on to say that our state law requires that districts notify each student and parent in writing whenever that student has been identified as at risk, mm-hmm. and the the. The things that can, the criteria for at risk is either they're a dropout. <laughs> so immediately I'm like, well, <laughs> news to me if my mm-hmm. child is a dropout since I am dropping her off and picking her up at school every day. <laughs> um, behind their age group and the number of high school credits, that's a criterion. Now, let's note that we haven't even finished one quarter of high school yet. <laughs> Two or more years behind their age group in basic skill levels. Again, if this is happening, (laughs) this is the first I've heard of it. Habitually truant, uh, a teen parent (laughs) or pregnant, (laughs) and adjudicated delinquent, or an eighth grader who has not passed eighth grade. (laughs) So I, of course, freak out. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And this came, this came like too late to do anything about it that day right Right. so i i didn't open it until after business hours on the day that it arrived you know um so i had to think about it all night (laughs) all night long (laughs) um and i didn't tell my husband because he would have been even more freaked out than i was so i was like i'm just gonna spare him until i know what's going on here because this is insane yes and and then it oh it comes from the director of pupil services, uh-huh. and then but it says if you have any questions regarding the district's at risk plan, you can contact their office. But if it's about your individual kid, you should call their school counselor. Oh man! So this requires me to figure out who is my kid's counselor. <laughs> I figure that out. I call that person. I leave a voicemail. I wait like five hours. Oh my! For a response. And, th- and she says, yes, this was a clerical error. Oh. You know, this was not, this apparently went out to a whole bunch of people oh that it gosh. shouldn't have. And the title of this story is A Terrible Day for the School Counselors. <laughs> right. Okay. And I said, and, and she was very like, you know, this didn't come from us. And I said, well, I know, but <laughs> you should know that it says to call you on yeah. it. <laughs> I said, so I hope you're not getting a hundred more calls. So yeah, it was very scary. Wow. And it it was reminiscent actually of a letter I had gotten. I believe my kid was in fifth grade at the time and she had missed whatever number of days of school okay. triggers the letter that uh-huh. says your kid is missing too much school. What is your problem? Okay. Um, <laughs> and that one had to come from the building principal. And I had a good relationship to him, so with him, and so I said, "Hey, I got I got your letter," and he's like, "Oh, don't worry about it. You know, I have to send it. If I had a real issue, I would talk to you. Like, Man. you know, just don't worry about it." Um, <laughs> Easy for him to say, <laughs> right? Um, so that's the kind of thing that this was. You know, it was obviously some kind of computer glitch, but it mm-hmm. was the kind of thing where the law requires that we notify mm-hmm. you. And is that a good way to approach oh, 
no way. parents in a school district. Uh, so what do you guys think? I mean, what? Wow. Well, I think how that could this have been better? <laughs> the moment, the very second they realized there was a clerical error, they should have done a phone blast. If you got a letter from us, please disregard it. Yes. That... You know, that would have solved them a lot of angry phone calls and saved parents a lot of nervous five hours waiting for somebody to get back to them. If they have that technology, that was the thing Which to do. Which they certainly do. Yes. I mean, they, because we get robocalls, we yes. get text messages, we get the, you know, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they, mm -hmm. they have our, obviously our email addresses. So there were many, many ways that they could have reached us yeah. quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, after three days, I still hadn't gotten, the, the counselor told me that there would be a follow-up mm -hmm. letter explaining what had happened and apologizing. Um, but that hadn't, after several days, it didn't come. So, you know, I, if I hadn't I picked up the phone, I still wouldn't know. Well, see, this could be a test. You send these letters out to everybody. The kids whose parents don't call in a frantic <laughs> anger those are the kids who are at risk because yeah, they don't yeah. have anybody at home getting the mail they don't have anybody who cares that these things are going on in their lives then you round up that list we had something similar happen to us last year with absences mm -hmm. we had a letter in the mail yeah. saying that um my daughter had you know far too many unexcused absences which is really you know basically saying that she was truant mm -hmm. and you know what is going on here I don't think so I mean I know that you know she's out but mostly for sports and whatnot so um and it was like official district letterhead yeah. <laughs> <It scares me. laughs> and called the office talked to the secretary and she's like oh yeah it's just an error a whole bunch of them went out and don't you know just disregard it and I'm like okay but you know in the meantime yeah. yeah I'm worried. <laughs> Doesn't it make you wish there was something you could send to the school and then say, oops, sorry, oh. just a clerical error? <laughs> a lawyer with a lawsuit. You know, oh, oh, did we send them to you? No, no, no. Oh, you just go someplace else. <laughs> it would be yeah. my child's going to be absent for the next six months and you're going to lose funding. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. Me too. <laughs> did yeah, that go I mean, well? It just, it just makes you wonder, like, you know, should there be a more nuanced policy? You know, if you're getting good news, like, you know, your kid has been named, uh, has is receiving an award or something, mm -hmm. then that gets emailed to you so that you can immediately forward it to all your friends and family. Um, no, I don't do that. <laughs> um, but scary news like this, you know, I don't know. If it came over the phone, then at least you could respond yeah. right away and say, like, what are you talking the thing about? Is, I wonder I wonder if it's kind of like the official special education notifications that have to go out, that it should not be the first contact with a parent. Right. You would have had, you would have been in the counselor's office, you would have done yeah. a number of things, and then they would just send you this because they have to officially do it. But you already right. know of the problem. So yeah. that's, right. you know, you would never be receiving that cold to say, oh, by the way, Kid yeah, I mean, there's all these criteria, right, of, of yeah. things on this letter. And any one of those should have certainly triggered a more yes. personal, yes. immediate conversation. So then the letter know? is just a formality on a discussion that you were already having. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I understand for if they have to send out something by law, they're just going to send that out in, in the mm -hmm. mail. But it should not be your first inkling that there is a problem. Just like yeah. your kid shouldn't bring home the uh, the packet of information about special education law without somebody saying, hey, by the way, you know, <laughs> why don't we have an IEP meeting? Yeah. I know when in, in the schools that I used to teach at, any time a child started to slide in any area, we had to contact the parents right away. Like that before anything was sent out, we had to have a phone conversation oh, yeah. with them or, yeah, I don't know. It just is a, a very... I think I mentioned this before, it's just that's a, a very confrontational, antagonistic yeah. situation that yeah. school... Well, can, and also, you know, in, in the case of, of this, you know, it was so impersonal, and, mm -hmm. um, but, it, and they said that this happened to a large number of people, mm -hmm. like, 
Whoever was standing at the printer when these were shooting <laughs> out know. of it and putting them in envelopes, maybe that person be like, geez, it seems like we're sending out an awful lot of these. Like what? <laughs> yeah. How Could computerized this... is this process? Yeah. So, so it's somewhere along the line. Did someone not stop and scratch their head and say, this seems excessive. <laughs> no, I, I would think that maybe they have student helpers, but they shouldn't have student helpers seeing those letters going into envelopes. Oh, I mean, I know my son used to, to see what, like what had an internship his senior year and he would stuff on envelopes for the, uh, the special ed director. And I don't know mm-hmm. what the sensitivity of the things he was <laughs> stuffing were, but, uh, I suppose kids would not necessarily think anything of it if they didn't, if it was already folded and they didn't tell them what it was. But yeah, you would think somebody would notice you were taking an awful lot of envelopes to the mail. How many kids are in the school altogether? Well, this was, it says for any student in grades five to 12, it, oh, could, wow. apply to, wow. it could apply to, <laughs> And, you know, just in the, in the high school alone, there's somewhere around 2,000 kids. So I don't know how many there are in the whole district. They need to put like a disclaimer at the bottom of it. If you have not previously heard from us about this problem, please disregard this notice. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> that would kind of defeat the purpose of like Yes, please, please allow your heart to start again. It's probably not for real. Wow. Oh. Yeah, there seems to be, I mean, this would be where having a Facebook page where they could say, hey, you know those letters? Never mind. Which would they do. Have a <laughs> they do have page. and they didn't. Well, they probably yeah. don't want it at this point to admit it. Right. So that means they're going to admit it to each person one at a wow. time as they, as they call I it. I phone call. Know. It was just a whole scary, you know, yeah. heart stopping moment that could have easily yeah. been avoided if somebody yes. was paying attention <laughs> there's really is there any good way to get bad news about your kid no i can't think I of don't one think there is. <laughs> i mean you no. get the note home and then that makes your heart drop and you can't do anything about it till the next day you get a phone call and then you feel put on the spot and you think of right. all the things you should have asked and said yeah. later on you get called into a meeting and that's certainly confrontational especially if you don't know what the meeting is about Mm-hmm. How about just never tell us any bad news? <laughs> <laughs> just fix it and keep it to yourself. <laughs> keep it to yourself. <laughs> how did you, Nicole, when you were teaching, how did you feel was a good way to tell parents bad news? Uh, or at least the least okay. bad way, I guess. Um, I would start with a phone call and then I just have some concerns about your child. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would you like to talk about it over the phone or do you want to come in and see me <laughs> like it was it was just I tried to be as oh it was hard those are the worst yeah. worst calls to make um but I tried not to make it personal I tried to make it more about you know we want to help them have the best educational experience right. possible mm-hmm. <laughs> So, yeah, but those were always the worst kind of calls. Because you know the parent on the other end is like, what? What do you want? (laughs) (laughs) Calling. (laughs) Just give me the goods right now. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. But you can't can't just send something home. I mean, that's, Mm -hmm. I don't really find that professional. You have to connect with them first, at least. But Right. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry that happened to you, Catherine. Yeah, that is so hard. I would have been that would have been a dark room with a wet rag over my eyes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> evening waiting to be able to yell at somebody the next morning. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Well, yeah. thank goodness I had my fellow podcasters. Yes. Facebook <laughs> secret message to me. I so and often see on Facebook some mom posting something like, I can't believe the letter I just got from the school, and then all the friends will swoop in and say you know provide that reassurance ghouls know how much their if their ears are ringing right and now i'm kind of really terrified to pull her out of school this oh no (laughs) i have to pull her out for skating and oh boy i'm like i'm now i'm really worried about being now you're marked branded as a true (laughs) now you'll get the letter for real yeah do they give you a hard time about that they don't it, like in the moment they I just say like you know I we're traveling or you know she has sometimes I just say she has an appointment <laughs> um, or I just state. say you know I or sometimes I say it's for sports because I want them to know like you know it's if it's okay for you know your basketball team yeah. to miss school all the time then it should be okay for her to miss mm-hmm. for sports um 
so I kind of mix it up and they just list it always as parent request and it's listed as excused, but, um, it's when they start adding up that. Yes. No, do you let her teachers know that she's, or does she let her teachers know? Yeah. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. And she can, you know, get all of her work online and keep Mm -hmm. up with it. So it's always been fine. You know, these last few years that, She's missed because of skating. So we just keep playing it by ear. <laughs> she does have like, um, cause I know here if they do so many hours of sports outside of school, they can have, they can miss a period and call it independent PE and then they get all sorts of extra leeway. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no. How I would have loved that. Yeah. I, I, as far as I know, we don't have that option, but uh, we should, I should look into that. Yeah. Look into- that would be very cool. She does put in plenty of plenty oh, of hours. Yeah. yeah. Does she like going to PE though, or does she? She's actually not taking it this ah. semester because it's not. She doesn't have to every single really? year. Yeah. Oh wow. So we're putting it off right now. <laughs> <laughs> Things in are so, kids today have it so easy. Well, this and I know this from my family fitness site. Mm-hmm. Um, states have very very different rules regarding how much PE is yeah. required um, for kids in different age groups so I yeah. see those and I see the posts from people saying it's terrible that they're taking away recess and they're taking away PE and I'm thinking could I be a kid today please 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 because <laughs> those were the banes of my existence PE I hate it and PE. and yeah. recess I was not a good recess person either I want to be in a classroom I want to have a book in front of me <laughs> but yeah, and Jim was the worst. Well, perhaps it's time to move on from a topic that made us angry to a topic that makes us a little sad. Um, it's time for our special Friday speed round. And if you have been following our speed rounds lately, you may have noticed uh, that our friend Amanda has not been with us for those as usual. And unfortunately, we are sad to report that Amanda is not going to be able to come out and play with us anymore. Uh, she's been a participant in this podcast since the very earliest days when we were just a bunch of about.com writers sitting around talking. And we are really going to miss chatting and laughing with her and having her point of view included here. Uh, we wanted to come up with a good way to say goodbye. And what we decided to do for this speed round is to look back through the quote graphics we have done from all our past podcasts and pick out some of our favorite Amanda quotes. Uh, so Catherine, do you have a favorite? Yes, I'm going to go with that classic. <laughs> <laughs> Amandaism, every energy up. Energy up. <laughs> Energy up, everyone. Um, <laughs> we we use that with each other. We use it on Twitter. You can get it on a mug. <laughs> because that's how important that is. It was an extremely little... limited edition of mugs. But they may recur. <laughs> I but... think we could make them available again. Yes. But the, the point is that... The Ma- um, Amanda Memorial mug. Right. <laughs> it's very motivating <laughs> to just picture Amanda giving you that little gentle nudge on, yes. on a day when you're dragging and yes. she up yes you we can do it we use that every monday uh um on the uh twitter on our twitter account to get people started in the week so it will live on <laughs> nicole did you find a quote you want to mention yes i picked one that actually does a better job of describing what we are and who we are <laughs> <laughs> and um amanda says we're actually the parenting neurotic roundabout <laughs> as we all talk about our stresses and anxieties and parenting issues. And I think that sums up. <laughs> yes, we are indeed the parenting neurotic roundabout. We should uh, change our name. <laughs> well, I could not settle on just one. Uh, I wanted to mention a few. Um, the very first quote graphic I ever did for this podcast was because Amanda said something on an episode and I felt it needed to be uh, memorialized and spread around. So uh, it was a quote from our episode 61 that was, uh, I don't know, maybe in March of 2015 that she said, total inclusion in philanthropy shouldn't be about people making a big deal out of doing the right thing. It should be about people doing the right thing daily without having to be recognized for it, which, amen. Um, Mm -hmm. So that was our very first quote graphic and I will always... Be thankful that she gave me the idea to do that by saying something that deserved one. Um, she also had a, a quote that she did in podcast, I think a little bit of parenting wisdom. You don't know what you don't know, you know? 
<laughs> Something about that just spoke to me, and I've made that my parenting motto. Um, and uh, finally, on one of our uh, podcasts, I think about, I think it was about traveling around or something like that. She said that she was so tired she wanted to cry. She was cryered. Oh, yes. And <laughs> that was a good I think term. that is a condition which I suffer frequently. I am frequently <laughs> cryered. Uh, so we thank Amanda for all of those and for so many episodes of making us laugh and making us think. And uh, we will miss you uh, every time we get together here. Yes. Uh, however, we will keep doing speed rounds, <laughs> just the three of us, <laughs> and you can hear those every Monday through Thursday, and then we will continue to have a Friday speed round here as part of our group chat, just because they're fun. Yeah. Um, and now, uh, Nicole, take us into our parenting roundabout roundup. So, what we're doing, what we're seeing, what we're sharing, what we want to shout out, what have you got for us this week? What things <laughs> would you like to talk about this week? Catherine, have you got anything for us? Well, I just wanted to mention that in, I think, many or most states, early voting has started. And I'm not going to say mm -hmm. anything else about the election, <laughs> but um, it's something to think about for parents because, you know, there may be long lines on election day and that's hard to deal with if you're working um, and or managing little ones Um so sometimes you can just pop into your city clerk's office um, and fill out a ballot and be on your way. So it's something to think about, and go. now's the time. Yeah, yeah. A random survey question. Do they close schools on Election Day where y'all are? They do not. And um, at my kids' elementary school, they have voting in the gym, and parents really are have concerns about yeah. it because yeah. there is no good way to make sure that people don't go wandering there into the not. school and plus then the traffic and the parking yeah. and yeah so yeah how about you nicole do they keep school open there they do from what i understand i see i i can't vote here in oh the that's US. right that's right, right. For right. so i um don't pay that close of attention and especially with this election yeah. i'm really tuning out fingers in ears yes. <laughs> well you know if your school kids home from school or not though They've started, they've started closing, they close the schools here for like big elections. Um, smaller ones, they don't necessarily, mm -hmm. but the big yeah. ones, um, I'm sure that they'll be off for the presidential election just because. The only other one was, we were here when Obama was elected, but uh -huh. I mean, we just moved here. So yeah. I was totally not paying attention at all. Yeah, but it just really is such a security risk. Oh my gosh, yeah. just anybody well, can come into the school. Right. Um, and, you know, you can't follow people around to make sure they're just going to the voting booth. Um, so uh, anyway, so moving on, I'll, I'll share what I have for the roundup today. I'm sure it will shock everybody to know that it's something Hamilton related because that's <laughs> not something I ever talk about. Uh, but um, I've been following amongst the many Hamilton related people I follow on Twitter is uh, Alex Lacamoire, who did the arrangements and the orchestrations, amongst other things. And there have been a little flurry of articles and interviews with him this week that I would like to recommend to everybody. There was an article in the Miami Herald, and then there's an interview he did, um, I think, for the uh, NEA site, and also an old one for AOL that I also would recommend. So I'll have links up to all of those. But it's really very interesting. I mean, he's a brilliant guy and a brilliant musician. And it's really, really interesting to hear about how things are arranged and orchestrated. You don't really think of mm -hmm. what goes into that. You just assume, well, somebody writes a song, and then it's up there on the stage. But what goes into deciding what sort of music needs to be underneath it and then which instruments should do that. And he explains very, very articulately and in a really interesting and compelling way how he goes through that process. It's extremely interesting. And it was also interesting, since I keep a special needs eye on everything, that he has like 15% hearing loss since he was a child. And um, how he dealt with that when he was a young person and how he feels it influences his ability to work with music. Um, really very interesting stuff. Good. And uh, for me, uh, as I was mentioning a couple of minutes ago, I try and tune out all of the election drama that's going on. <laughs> Good luck with that. So Where the is the filter, I... the internet filter that we all are crying for? I would well, like to know. I have found a way to do that and it is another game, an app that I <laughs> totally engrossed in and it helps me avoid all of that noise around me and so I've been playing Bejeweled Stars lately mm. and um, it's uh, sort of a spin-off of Bejeweled Blitz 
but it's called Bejeweled Stars. And it's All right. um, addicting. Don't start. <laughs> I warn you. <laughs> I will be continuing to blame my lack of productivity on Nicole. <laughs> She's always there with the game. <laughs> always there with the game. <laughs> Thanks so much there, pal. <laughs> well, now we have come up to the interview uh, segment of our show. And with um, Halloween coming up, uh, I thought it would be a good time to chat about uh, kids with food allergies. So I spoke with Gina Klaus, who's the National Director of Training for uh Fair and founder of the Allergy Moms on Light Support Group. Um, so we had a chat about uh, how to accommodate kids with food allergies in the neighborhood and in the classroom and some things that parents of kids with food allergies might want to think about. So let's listen to that interview now. So Gina, it's very nice to talk to you today. Uh, we are coming up on Halloween, which I know can be a big issue for parents of kids with food allergies. Uh, can you tell me about what some of the challenges are and what parents are doing to deal with those? Sure, and thanks for having me, Terry. So a lot of holidays are focused around food, whether it's Valentine's Day or Thanksgiving. You know, we break bread to celebrate, and Halloween certainly with the candy is a big part of that. So a lot of the candies coming from different neighbors and uh, people that we don't know. It can be hard to read ingredients. And then a lot of Halloween candy, even if you're familiar with the full-size version, and perhaps the ingredients are safe, a lot of times the Halloween versions have different ingredients. So there are a lot of challenges. Yeah, and there's never ingredients ingredients printed on those little tiny individual things. Yeah, often there's down. not, right. Yeah, so that's, um, so what do you uh, recommend? Do you just like take all your kids stuff away and give them something that's safe? Or um, do you work with neighbors to kind of say, could you not give something that's going to kill my kid <laughs> this year? Well, there are a lot of different ways you can handle it. Some parents do, and I've certainly did, done that when my son was very little, where I would buy a little matchbox car, or little tattoos or something, yeah. and put them in a Ziploc bag and give them some to the willing neighbors. Uh -huh. And then as my son got older and made some friends, there were some wonderful friends in the neighborhood who would actually call me and find out what is safe. And they knew, like, uh, Smarties happened to be top eight free and safe, bazooka bubble gum. Mm -hmm. They would put it aside in a little baggie, and then Daniel would come, oh, hold on a minute, it's Daniel, and they would give him that. And I'll tell you what, when people who do go the extra mile like that for your child, it really, it really just means so much. It's really what life is all about. Um, yes. The other things you can do is, you know, kids eat candy. When my son was little, we had a big lecture, absolutely no eating candy. Oh, I got it, mom. And, you know, <laughs> after four houses, he's got like a red mustache because he's yeah. eating candy. Yeah. So put a few pieces of the safe candy that you 100% know is safe and that your mm -hmm. child can enjoy. And this is the only candy he's allowed to have while trick-or-treating. Of course, having a parent go along yeah. taking the epinephrine auto injector one brand name is epipen wet uh -huh. wipes flashlights so you can look at them in a cell phone those things are really important oh, that's good. and then for little kids who may have a severe sensitivity you may even choose a costume with gloves so that they're not touching different oh, things yeah. candy apples and whatnot that's a great idea i hadn't even thought of that um what is the yeah, i know there's something going on with a teal pumpkin that Farah's is doing what is uh, the story behind that Sure. Um, well, the Teal Pumpkin Project is really about awareness. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of holidays with food, kids with allergies are excluded. Yeah. And this is a way for them to be included. Mm -hmm. What the Teal Pumpkin means is that the family has non-food treats. Uh, so there's some confusion and some people think it's allergy friendly, but really you can have an allergy to any food. Mm -hmm. So what this means is, and it doesn't mean you don't give out candy. You're more than welcome to give out candy, yeah. but having either a, a pumpkin that you've painted or purchased that's teal on your porch or mm -hmm. a teal pumpkin sign on your door in your window means that you have some non-food treats as well. And it really works for not only kids with food allergies, but other kids with, say, celiac or lactose intolerance or some other things where they're avoiding Diabetes. certain foods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, if you want to. And we have purchased, you know, last it was a couple years ago, I purchased um, whistles for 10 cents. Oh, neat. And some of the some of the middle school kids weren't so thrilled, but the high school kids went marching along down the street. You could hear the whistles for like all the way across the neighborhood. So yeah, it's that's a nice great. Thing. Yeah. You know, and the candy gets consumed so quick. It's kind of cool to have something that's going to last a little while. 
Yeah, it really is. And I think it, the message of inclusion is really important because yes. it's not just the food allergy. It's that, you know, these kids are excluded from a lot of celebrations. So our goal at FAIR is that there's one on every block. So every block where a child is trick-or-treating, there's somebody there where they know for sure they're going to get something that they can take and keep mm -hmm. because that's the other team. It's, it's, it's sometimes a spectator sport for kids with food allergies because they'll collect the candy, but then at home they may have to trade it in. They may have to donate it. Mm -hmm. It's quite possible that nothing that they have is safe for them so yeah. this way they can be sure that something there they can take home and they can keep it and then parents when they purchase uh, trinkets from party city mm -hmm. or the like you can keep that it can be used in a pinata at a birthday oh, party sure. it can be used in stockings you know that stuff doesn't go bad and mom doesn't have to end up eating it at the end of the night like <laughs> i was just gonna candy. say <laughs> yeah we throw ourselves on the candy just to I can't sacrifice wait to get ourselves rid of it. yeah yeah i do i allow myself one night to finish off all the candy yeah. and then it's, i have to get it out of the so yeah <laughs> that's good and it's also just in terms of you know as you said inclusiveness just to know that your community is looking out for you that you have neighbors that are looking out for you that you're not um having to just go and toss everything that the neighbors give you but they're actually thinking about you that's a really nice thing and something for you know if you're the parent not of a child who has those issues but to to think about how it would feel for them and how you would feel if it was your kid and yeah. it's so easy to have some other options. Yeah, it's quite a lesson. And I think even with my own son, he has a friend who has uh, epilepsy and another with type 1 diabetes. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've learned some things and some accommodations that we have to make if they come for a sleepover. And yeah. I think it's a really important lesson. I'm really happy to be sharing with my son that, no, we won't be playing this video game tonight because we don't want to endanger our friends. And these are the things yeah. that we do to accommodate. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's so many bu bullying programs in the schools, and this is like a really concrete way to say this is the way we look out for one another um, absolutely but so often the opportunity seems to be missed uh school parties also often a big issue and sometimes things that adults i think do things that if they really sat down and thought about it they would realize are not appropriate um, oh that's absolutely <laughs> it's i think in some ways we allergy parents have trained teachers and others to kind of do this well meaningly of course yeah but you know we provide this quote safe treat box and right. then teachers are you know they'll give out 19 cupcakes cupcake 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 and the allergic child is out and we don't realize you know in most public schools you can't give out party invitations unless you invite the whole class right. or at least all the boys or all the girls why because we don't want to exclude anyone yes. but yet we'll exclude the child with food allergies or celiac when the cupcake is the celebration yeah. and you have to really I think we've turned a blind eye to this we're really not looking at what this is all about and mm -hmm. you know early on I you know I said in our house if we have four popsicles and five kids playing we don't give out the popsicles exactly. we're just, we wouldn't dream of saying oh here's a bag of pretzels because they're kids and it's yeah. just we want them all to participate and all to be included mm -hmm. so I think today for all teachers and those working with kids whether it's counselors or coaches or what have you you know everybody needs to be aware of food allergies it's eight percent of children today yeah. have at least one food allergy and a third of them have multiple food allergies mm -hmm. so the more you can minimize food doesn't mean you have no food but minimize it and streamlines it streamline yeah. it um, I work with some schools where they had you know they gave me an anonymous list of all these different food allergies and celiac and special dietary needs and they wanted me to come up with one thing that was safe for everyone it really wasn't possible <laughs> but we did come up with three things where yeah. every child could have at least two things right but when you have all these different party foods and it's really dangerous and you have like parent volunteers who yes. are well-meaning but just not aware like I'm not aware of everything you need to do if yes. you have a child who has epilepsy or type 1 diabetes and I wouldn't expect a parent to understand every all the nuances of dealing no. with food allergies but it's a challenge and sometimes I feel maybe not so well-meaning <laughs> people yeah. say it's well, important it's more, more important for my kid to have my special cupcakes in class than for somebody else to be healthy um, you know, it's not, you're going to school to learn. You're not going to school to eat snacks. When did this become so important that we had to have the certain kind of party and that if we can't, it's a tragedy? Um, well, I think we've, the, the pendulum has swung so far one way that parents kind of believe that there's this, you know, the sense of entitlement to celebrate your yeah. child in the classroom. And really there, you really don't have a right to that. 
Um, and no parent uh, with a child with food allergies or any disability would, would choose that route, but we have to do what we can to advocate for our kids. Yes. And if they really knew, I, I, I maintain that anybody who's actually seen a child in the midst of anaphylaxis or having to inject a child, yeah. I think if you have that under your belt, you get it on a different level. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, Definitely. We don't wish that for anyone, but it's a, it's no. very frightening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, obviously there's people who don't get it, who think it's just, you know, indulging a kid who's picky or um, that it's all, we didn't have this when I was in school, so therefore it doesn't exist. Um, and you don't want a kid to have to go through that to prove it to, you know, to prove yeah. that it's real, but I just don't. How, what do you suggest to parents dealing with other parents who don't get it? What, do you have resources that they can hand out or, because uh, you, you don't want to be, because of Sally, we can't have cupcakes. You know, you don't want to no, make no. it that sort of thing. There's got to be a way to approach it that makes it a better thing for everybody. Well, it, it really depends. There's, a, there's in my mind, a big difference between how you accommodate and parent your child uh, at home and at private events versus at school. Mm -hmm. uh, it, in a, at a private birthday party, there's absolutely no obligation for that birthday parent, whether it's right. a relative or a friend, to provide a safe thing. It's, it's beautiful if they can and yeah. are willing, but it's, they're not required to do that. But at school, children do have a right to be included in all activities, yeah. including celebrations. And actually, the school's responsible for food served in the classroom, regardless of who bakes or buys it. If mm -hmm. they're allowing a birthday celebration, they're responsible. Yeah. But schools also have a responsibility to protect their children, the students' medical information. So yeah. really, when you're planning parties, the teacher or the nurse should be the contact mm -hmm. and the teacher should be trying to orchestrate between any children that have special dietary needs or allergies what is allowable what they can do and not having the parent with the allergies dealing with say the yeah. room mom or something and trying to plead her case and say oh could you please sir no 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 yeah. that's not appropriate well, that's so yeah yeah so yeah. I would recommend working directly with the school on a school plan mm -hmm. and having the you know we recommend a 504 plan in public schools right. because it's a little bit more of a formal document and having every, everything documented what is needed and that includes celebrations birthdays snacks treats food rewards etc mm -hmm. okay well that is really good advice and thank you so much for talking with us today and perhaps we can check in with you on some of these other food holidays as they go by <laughs> i would love that thank you for having That's me great. Terry, and happy halloween and this all reminds me that it is time to buy things to give out That's although right. we never have we never have anybody at our house even if even if we uh, had a teal pumpkin out, I think we would never give anything away. We would just we, we would just have a bunch of pencils, which is not a bad thing. I can, probably better the pencils than the the bag of Snickers bars, which I usually wind up eating. <laughs> oh, you can't do that. <laughs> Toothbrushes. <laughs> Boy, everybody's gonna love you. Yeah. Oh, Eggs well. on your door, I see. Let's list some reasons why people should love us by giving <laughs> our giving you some things on our sites that we think you should take a look at in our shameless self promotion segment. <laughs> Terry, you have something that's food allergy. Yeah, related. in keeping with the food allergy conversation theme, um, a while ago on my Parenting Isn't Pretty blog, I wrote a post about why kids with food allergies are ground zero for inclusion, because if we can't even manage to include kids that all you have to do is not give them some food that will kill them, how are we going to accommodate the kids who need so much more adjustment in everybody else's uh, program? So I'll have a link up for that uh, on my blog. Great. How about you, Nicole? What do you have for us? Well, I have some news. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> unofficial, but it will be official, I believe, by the time this podcast airs. But uh, it is that we just found out this week, a group of colleagues and I are heading to the ultra super duper cool conference, <laughs> uh, South by Southwest in Austin, Texas in March. And we are going to be presenting on the topic of inclusion. And, mm -hmm. uh, so if you're heading that way, look us up, find our session, awesome. come say hi. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Well, I'm going to mention, um, a piece I did for very well on brain breaks. So this is for those, <laughs> Terry would have loved this when she was in school. Um, little like three to four to five minute um, physical activities that kids can do either in the classroom or you can do them at home too. Like say they're doing homework and they're starting to 
you know, max out. Um, just these quick little physical activities that just kind of help reset their brains and give their bodies a little, a little activity. And there's tons of fun little games that, um, that you can do. So I have them all listed there on very well. That is it for this week's episode of Parenting Roundabout. We hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join us every week. You can listen to podcast episodes on parentingroundabout.com or download them from iTunes. Please subscribe to get all of our podcasts and mini podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitter, where I am at Nicole Eridix, Terry is at Mama T, and Catherine is at About Family Fit. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter at Roundabout Chat and look for us on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, YouTube, and Instagram too. Best of all, stop by our blog at parentingroundabout.com and read recaps, find links on all the stories we mentioned, and talk back in the comments. Thanks to John Warren for providing our internet music, and we wish everyone a great week.